This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, it has been quite a while since I've talked about a movie on this channel. The last one was Marvel's Eternals, and that video came out almost a year ago, so it's about time I changed that. And surprisingly, today, we're gonna talk about a Netflix original film. I say surprisingly because I have a bit of a skeptical outlook on Netflix original movies, because in general, well, they tend to not be very good. You'll maybe get one or two good ones a year, which is absolutely insane to think about when you consider that just last year, Netflix released around 250 original movies. Quick math, that's roughly 21 movies a month. But this time, my interest was picked because came along a movie starring two actresses I really like, Camila Mendez and Maya Hawk. Obviously, Camila Mendez is known for her role as Veronica Lodge on Riverdale. I voiced my dislike of this character in much detail in my Riverdale video, but I do think Camila Mendez is awesome. I've always been excited to see her work outside of Riverdale. And of course, Maya Hawk is now mostly famous for her role as Robin in Stranger Things. So easy to say, having these two together in a movie was more than enough for me to want to take a look at it. And for the record, I didn't even know this movie was a thing. I didn't know it was coming out, I didn't know Know what it was about i somehow even missed the trailers like I, I don't know how but this movie completely flew under my radar but once it made its way through the netflix top 10 after its release it became really hard to miss it so i thought i would check it out Let's talk about it. So Do Revenge is the story of Drea Torres, a famous and beloved high school student from a prestigious establishment in Miami. When we meet her, she's at the top of the social ladder. She's partnering with Vogue, she's doing magazine covers, she completely plays the Game of Thrones, she understands the politics behind her status, people think she's the brightest mind of all time, her friends throw high profile parties in her name, she's in a relationship with an equally popular young man men and everybody looks at them as the ultimate couple goals. Drea is a queen, a goddess amongst men. However, everything comes crashing down on the last day of junior year when Drea's sex tape is leaked online by her boyfriend and the entire school is exposed to it. I'm sorry, am I being paranoid or is everyone staring at me right now? like not in a good way. Drea's reputation and social stature are instantly destroyed. She breaks up with her boyfriend. <laughs> She's immediately dropped by her high-profile friend group, and she ends up completely alone and abandoned throughout the entire summer leading up to her senior year. But after a period of solitude she spends boiling in her own anger, Drea meets Eleanor, a shy and awkward new student who just moved back in town and doesn't really fit in. Eleanor drives Drea home after her car breaks down, and the two have an intimate conversation about their frustrations, their trauma, and the people who wronged them in the past. Ah! Oh, fuck. Drea obviously hates her ex-boyfriend and her former friends, and Eleanor was traumatized by a girl who humiliated her and painted her as a creepy predator after she confessed having feelings for her back when she was 13. Drea and Eleanor bond over their rage, and after a terrible first day at school that once again leaves them humiliated and bitter, they decide to join forces and go all out. Drea and Eleanor vow to take revenge on each other's bullies and destroy their lives once once and for all. I mean, is do revenge even like correct grammar? Oh, I'm sorry, Schoolhouse Rock. Are you dragging my sentence structure right now? It's a fun premise, very heavily inspired by Hitchcock and his 1951 film Strangers on a Train, except, you know, this one doesn't involve murder. This movie was written and directed by Jennifer Caden Robinson, who said like that should not really ring a bell to anyone, but that name gets me worried because homegirl Jennifer is also the writer of 2022's Thor Love and Thunder, which she co-wrote with director Taika. Waititi. And let's just say that Thor Love and Thunder is not only a bad movie, it is also the most disappointing movie of the year, and pretty much all of that is 
is due to its very mediocre writing. In other words, I went into this one feeling very cautious. But lo and behold, while I have some issues with Do Revenge that I will talk about in a minute, I surprisingly did not hate this movie. Actually, I kind, I kind of liked it a little bit. I was also pleasantly surprised when I realized that aside from Camila Mendez and Maya Hawk, this movie has like an amazing cast. Sarah Michelle Gellar is in it. That was cool to see. Sophie Turner is in it too. She plays a character that admittedly has no reason to exist in this movie, but I like Sophie Turner, so I'll take it. Maya Rafiko is in there. I just talked about her in my last video on Pretty Little Liars Original Sin, where she played the only character I actually like. She was really funny in this movie. I'm glad she was there. I'm rooting for your success, Maya. Don't worry, I got you. Alicia Bow is also in this movie. A really likable actress who unfortunately wasted way too much of her career, time, and talent playing one of the worst characters in 13 Reasons Why. Which is saying something because there isn't a single good character in 13 Reasons Why. So imagine being one of the worst ones. And there's also Ava Capri who surprisingly I know from YouTube. So it was fun to see her in there too. It's a pretty solid cast, honestly, and everybody seems to be having a lot of fun in their respective roles. This movie genuinely seemed kind of exciting, so I sat down and I watched it, and man, if I got one thing to say, it would be, Do Revenge is so stupid. I mean it, it's so dumb. It's one of the dumbest movies I've seen this year, but not in a bad way. Because, yeah, make no mistake, this movie knows it's stupid. It knows what it's doing. It is 90s camp adapted for the modern era. And when I say it's camp, I mean it's the real deal. It's actual camp. See, lately, I've grown a bit tired of people who use the term camp to justify liking a movie or a show that just sucks. And they'll try to gaslight you by saying that you just don't get camp. That's why you don't like it. Like, you're too dumb to understand the most basic teen media but they have something on you that you can't see or whatever but no i'm sorry gossip girl 2021 is not camp it's just a bad show with mediocre writing but i think do revenge is a really good example of camp done right this movie does not want you to take it seriously it doesn't give a shit about that it kind of just wants you to sit back and relax and turn your brain off and enjoy the dumbness and that's exactly what i did and you know what? It may not be perfect. Again, I have some issues with it, but this movie is kind of all right. And for what it is, it's kind of fun. It very much has an old school 90s teen comedy vibe to it that is weirdly endearing. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it has some wacky humor that admittedly doesn't always land. Like this movie is definitely not as funny as it thinks it is, but it has its moments. I chuckled a few times. Carissa, right? Yeah, we've met before. You called me a human Birkenstock. Cool. And like I just mentioned, this movie is made fun in major part thanks to its cast. Despite some minor disappointments regarding some characters and performances, it really does seem like the cast is having fun. Sure, this isn't Maya Hawke's best performance. I don't think she will particularly be remembered for this role, but she's still somewhat fun as Eleanor. And yes, Camila Mendes' character is just a carbon copy of Veronica Lodge, and she for the most part plays her the exact same way. We the exact same mannerisms and the exact same line delivery but it sort of works like it works for what that character is supposed to be so i'm willing to let it slide i do wish she had done something different with the role because i definitely don't want camilla to forever be typecast as veronica ripoffs for as long as she can play a teenager on screen but at least her performance is super solid she honestly kind of kills it in this movie peaking in high school is cringe anyway sarah michelle geller is on on autopilot this entire movie. She's not even trying. This is probably her worst performance to date, and I've seen her in a bunch of shit. But I'm just a sucker for Sarah Michelle Gellar. I'll literally watch her in anything. Her character is not in the movie a lot though, so even if she's bad in it, it's not too distracting. At least she looks like she's having fun too. And you can tell they're having a blast because the characters, for the most part, are all really fun, and the way they're written makes sense. Drea is an absolute ass 
asshole. She's rude as shit and selfish and self-centered. But she's not one-dimensional with those flaws. She has her layers and that makes her somewhat attaching in certain aspects. They make her just likable enough that you feel bad for her when bad shit happens to her, which you absolutely need for this movie to work. If you can't sympathize with Drea at least a little bit, a lot about this movie instantly falls apart. So good on them for understanding that because a lot of writers would have gone all out with her being an irredeemable mean girl and that would not have landed. This character works and Camila carries this movie perfectly well. Eleanor is not as strong of a character in my opinion, but eh, she's fine. She's your typical shy, awkward girl whose awkwardness and lack of style is often played for laughs. She even gets to have the cliche makeover montage sequence that's very well known to 90s teen comedies. In fact, her character just feels like an homage to a myriad of characters from classic 90s teen movies, which makes sense because Do Revenge is kind of obsessed with 90s teen movies. It is riddled with homages and references, some of which are pretty cute and others are just obnoxious. You're giving off some serious, like, Glenn Close and Fatal Attraction energy. Glenn energy. That's not funny! But boy, you got everything in there. Mean Girls, Clueless, Scream, Jawbreaker, everything. It's all in there. The movie is not subtle about it. It's very in your face and it seems like Eleanor is an amalgamation of a bunch of characters from that era. My big issue with Do Revenge is that this movie has a bunch of unnecessary characters that really drag the movie down. Like the movie would be way better if they weren't in it. For starters, Do Revenge probably deserves an award for the most underdeveloped romance storylines of the year. I don't know why Treya and Eleanor needed to have love interests in this story. And clearly they didn't think about the why too much because oh boy, these are the most half-assed love interests I've seen in a hot minute. I don't remember this guy's name and I'm not gonna look it up because that's the movie's fault. But Jesus, he's just sort of there, isn't he? <laughs> Honestly, his romance with Drea was so random that I genuinely got confused when they kissed. Like it really came out of nowhere for me. Eleanor's love interest is a bit better. I also don't remember her name, but she's played by Talia Ryder, who is awesome. If you haven't seen Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always, I highly recommend it. This movie is amazing. But let's face it, her character is also kind of just there, and her romance with Eleanor is also insanely underdeveloped. Like, just to tell you how random these two romantic plot lines are, they're such an afterthought that they're resolved during the end credits. It's like a random, very awkward little tag that plays after the movie ends. Like, bro, come on. And look, as much as I like Sophie Turner, I just gotta ask, why is she here? Why? She's funny in the movie, don't get me wrong. She's completely unhinged. Every time she's on screen, it's just an extended sequence of her going sicko mode on everybody. But like, Come on, man. Her character never has anything to do with the story. It feels like the director was just friends with Sophie Turner and they happened to have her on set for like a day and they just shot a couple of scenes that have nothing to do with the actual story where she could just kind of do whatever she wanted. Like that's the vibe I get from her scenes. Again, they're fun sequences, but just why? Okay, anyway, I'm gonna stop nitpicking now. I'm gonna be honest, guys. At first, I didn't get it. The entire first half of this movie, while I was sort of enjoying it, I just didn't get the hype. I did not understand why people were so excited about this movie. Yeah, the girls get angry and they create the most insane plans to get their revenge and it's really fun to watch. Like, I love how unhinged it is. Literally, there's a scene in the movie where the girls need to steal someone's phone and they need to come up with a plan to do that. So they decide to drug the entire school in in order to get the phone of that one guy when he's too high to realize. Something's happening. It's just to give you an idea of the type of chaos we're dealing with here. Also, the dialogue is just as chaotic. Some of the lines in this movie, man, it just crack me up. Y'all are young. We're fluid. We should be out there just. Eating ass, dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, let me be very clear. I was enjoying the stupidity of it all. It was fun, but I didn't understand what about it was supposed to stand out so much. It was just kind of an average teen movie with fun moments. But that's when I was hit in the face by the twist. Yeah, yeah, I gotta admit. I didn't see it coming. I didn't expect it. I underestimated the movie on that one. I thought I had figured out where it was going. I thought it was predictable, but I was wrong. About 75% in, the movie throws you for a loop when it's revealed that Eleanor has actually been plotting to destroy Drea's life this entire time. It turns out that the girl that humiliated Eleanor four years prior, the girl that gave her the predator reputation that ruined her life? Well, that was Drea. Drea bullied Eleanor when they were 13 and she literally ruined her social life, but she doesn't even remember doing it. And the worst part is you don't even remember doing this to me. I told you the entire story and you didn't know I was talking about you. I gotta admit, that was a pretty fun twist. Finding out that Drea's car didn't really break down at the beginning of the movie, but Eleanor actually sabotaged it, only to then step in and offer her help so she could befriend Drea and gain her trust. Damn, that shit is cold. And I love it. Yeah, from there, the movie totally shifts. Eleanor does a complete 180 and becomes a ruthless villain, and you get to see how manipulative she's been since the beginning. It's a twist that's just really well executed. She wants to socially massacre Drea, and she's ready to do some truly evil shit to accomplish her goal. She threatens to frame Drea's mother for drug possession, which would immediately make her lose her job as a nurse. She even goes as far as hitting Drea with her car to get her in the hospital so that people could start giving her attention again. Lady, you are evil! The movie plays heavily with this idea of the hypocritical social ladder full of fake people, and Eleanor plays with that to get what she wants, and it's really interesting. She wants to build Drea back up so that she can then fall from higher. It's a really messed up concept. And that part of the movie is honestly a blast. It's so fun. And by that point, I got it. I was like, yeah, this movie is fucking stupid and it's a blast. It's just insanity on screen and it really enjoys being as chaotic as possible with it. The moment this twist happened, I was fully on board. Full chaos, full camp, full stupid, full everything. Sign me the fuck up. Evil Eleanor is cool as shit and the idea that Drea has to lean towards the ugliest parts of herself to get the upper hand is also really interesting. I was so ready to see the final showdown between these two because Eleanor turns out to be an evil lady who's also really smart, but Drea had already proven herself to be an insanely calculated maniac who was ready to go to great lengths to achieve her goals. We see her frame Sophie Turner for cocaine possession at the beginning of the movie, and in case I need to remind you, she drugged her entire school to get her hands on one phone, and she then framed another student by exposing her stash of weed she was growing in the garden. Drea is just as much of a monster as Eleanor, so watching them go toe-to-toe -to -toe in an epic, campy battle of wits was a really exciting idea. An idea that never happens. Yeah, unfortunately, despite the amazing twist, I think Do Revenge really shoots itself in the foot in the last, like, 15 minutes. Long story short, the ending is really lame. They didn't have the balls to stick with that twist. Like, they didn't commit to it. Like, genuinely, this could have ended in such a fun way, but instead of ending the movie with the big Eleanor versus Drea all-out war of mutual revenge, the movie decides to do the lame thing, and they have them make up out of nowhere, and then the final villain turns out to be Drea's ex, so they team up again to take him down once and for all, because obviously, the big bad had to be a misogynistic man the girls have to defeat. And I don't know, I get the idea, but it felt like a cheap switcheroo that took away from how insane the twist was. Eleanor was a perfect villain, and after the twist, they leaned so far into her being irredeemable. So like, 
why did you guys take it back? If anything, Drea should have ended both Eleanor and her ex, but I don't like that they become friends again. That's bullshit. Like, Drea is ready to move mountains to destroy her ex who leaked her sex tape, but you're telling me she's fine forgiving the girl who hit her with her car on purpose and risked killing her just a few days ago? I know this movie is not really about consistency or anything, but it felt out of character for both of these girls to squash their beef so fast and so easily just to turn the focus on Drea's ex and have him get his ass kicked. It's a little lazy if you ask me, and I found it really annoying because I loved where this shit was going. But anyways... So they destroyed the dude's life and he loses everything and I guess that's all they needed to be happy. So now they're besties and they live happily ever after. That's not even a joke, that's that's how it ends. The movie literally closes with them riding off into the sunset. It's very on the nose. It's not the worst ending in the world, but for what that movie built up for well over half of its runtime, this ending is so lame and underwhelming, but eh, I didn't overthink it. it is what it is. Overall, Do Revenge is a fun ride. This movie in my head is the same as like a Fast and Furious movie. It's the type of movie that doesn't try to be anything other than surface level. It doesn't want you to think too hard. It's something you watch to turn your brain off and get some dumb in your eyes and it is great at being just that. It is brainless entertainment and I think everybody needs that once in a while. This movie is totally fine. I don't think it's this great new piece of music media that some people have painted it as online. Some people are talking about it like it's a future classic. But like, yeah, it definitely works as an easily digestible teen comedy to put on when you don't really have anything to watch. The ending sucks, it's a bit messy, and the overbearing themes of performative activism and wokeness do not detract from the fact that this movie itself comes across as very performative in a lot of ways. But honestly, you don't need to think about it too much. It's a throwback to teen movies from the 90s, and it doesn't need to be anything more than that, which is good because it also doesn't try to be anything more than that. Like I said at the beginning, Do Revenge knows what it is. It's just dumb fun. Will I ever watch this movie again? Nope, but at least I'm glad this movie wasn't an absolute shit show with actors that I like because I am really tired of that happening. Now somebody please give Camila Mendes a role that isn't a Walmart version of Veronica Lodge. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe I'm saying this. Uh -huh. Welcome back to the Mothership. Woo! Season two, baby. Hey. 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 Once again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Yeah, guys, they're back, and you know the drill. If you want to create your own website, Squarespace is the place to go. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which you can do exactly that. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated, members-only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights. All of that on one easy-to-use platform. You can create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and even likes. And of course, you can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts. But that's not all. You can also extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales stacks, and ship items all around the globe. You can even display posts from your social media profiles on your website and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. It's honestly amazing, it's easy to use, and super intuitive. You can go right now to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash friendly space ninja to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash friendly space ninja.